and we're back. Royal Rumble was last night. Delicious. Welcome, boys and girls, to another edition of Better in Broadway. We are in your living room for episode, uh, not one, not two, not three, but four of season two. Or or we could be in your car. We we might be in your truck. We could be, you could be at the gym. You might be at like one of those like little like, like sexy massage places that are under the table. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Listening to a pro wrestling podcast. Okay. We're accessible, man. We're accessible. Listen, listen, if we just do it real quick. But, you know, not everybody, not everybody's Everyone into that shit. Hear all I mean, that. You know, some people like, you know, to be to be yelled at. Justin loves to be yelled at, from what I'm told. So, <laughs> well, guys, it depends last on what the night, situation is. Guys, last night was one of the best Royal Rumbles I know I have ever seen. And what made it so special was not just the show, but the fact that we were all able to get together as a group last night and watch the show at our friend David Lewis's house. So shout out to our boy, David Lewis, listening to us from Marietta, Georgia. You're our guy. We love you. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful friend. But should we tell them what makes that house really unique? If you really want to, it doesn't matter. I think we should. I think, I think we should, we should brag about it. So our buddy, David, um, he had an opportunity of a lifetime to purchase Cody Rhodes house because Cody Rhodes was moving. This is while he was still in AEW and, um, and he jumped on it. He, he wrote a, uh, he had to write him a letter. I won't go into like the whole depths of it and like all that kind of crap, but, um, he, why had, he wanted to buy it. There was like eight people that wanted to buy this. If I remember the, the number correctly. And he wrote a letter and mentioned, you know, hard times and the American dream. And he was a fan. And so he won because of that. So, and because of that, the same road uh, the same basement that you saw, um, you know, Ricky Starks get like pile drived on in the road to the was it road to the road top? To the top. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, road to the top um, <laughs> thing is where we watched. Uh, well, we've watched WrestleMania at it, but last night yeah. we watched the Royal Rumble. Where um, we're going to get into it for a little bit, but um, here in a little bit, but where Cody Rhodes won. It was yes. very serendipitous. Very it was special. it was meta. Yeah, this is going to be a quick one, guys. This is going to be a super quick one. Rob, yeah. why don't you just – let's jump right in. Let's just go through the card, and we're just going to give – Rob, you go, I'll go, and then Ryan goes, and then boom, let's do it. Absolutely. Perfect. So, Men's Royal Rumble kicks off the show, so you know we're going to have something special here. 30 men enter the ring. One. They did win. not waste time getting into that. Did not waste time. They started out with Gunta, the former Volta from WXW, who is the uh, current Intercontinental Champion, and Sheamus, who is the past Intercontinental Champion. These two fellas have history. They went they went crazy in the beginning. The ring starts to fill. Everything's good. And we had a few surprises. We had the returning Edge. We had Booker T. And we had Logan Paul, our three big surprises. But in the end, in the end, the American Nightmare, Mr. Cody Rhodes, watching it from his old home, watching this guy come in at number 30, win the Royal Rumble, we had some great spots during that match, but fellas, go ahead and give your thoughts on the American Nightmare being the now number one contender to the universal title held by Mr. Roman Reigns. I think if he was going to be the number one contender, he should have entered at one and worked through every single person that came yeah. in that ring. And that would have made him winning on his comeback so much sweeter. He would have earned it. Maybe. Here's here's why I don't necessarily think that that was a great idea. For one, you guys may not know this, but it was just released today that Cody Rhodes' first day that he was released to be able to wrestle was last night. So he was literally not cleared to wrestle Friday. Oh. So that Damn. means he's 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 you know he's back. But obviously, the last thing they want to do is put him in a freaking seventy minute match his first night back. Interesting. Through. That and that is. So, that alone, but also something else that was that was special. And we talk about this. I, I, you, you talked about Gunther or Gunther or, or you know, whatever, how they you know, say it. Yeah, you say Gunther, I say Gunther. Um, you want to talk about somebody not winning but getting over at a Rumble. Like, that is a perfect yeah. example of someone having their spots. He was there, the workhorse. They even talked about it in the press conference afterwards. But he got over, and, and you know, I wasn't really a big Gunther fan before. He just seemed like vanilla. But, like, that performance was, was magnificent. And 
it, it re- it's really cool, and it's going to be cool to see what they do with him. And I think Gunther coming in and being first and being the last one out, I think was was really big for him. And I think yeah. there's going to be some some good storylines that are drawn from that. And it kept Cody safe. Um, the yeah. only thing that I don't agree and like about it is announcing this before. I understand that the promos were special because yeah. you know he's doing his comeback promos, but they can do that and then maybe set it for he's coming back. You know, he'll be back in time for Mania, this and that, and then still be a surprise. Like, they can still do that. Um, I just I just felt like the only reason, the only positive side to do that would be to bring back um, – or to, to bring him back and, and talk about it would be to have more people put their eyes on it because they're wanting to see him come back. But I don't think that that many people watched the Rumble that weren't going to watch it because he came back. I, I just think that the surprise was more special. Um, that's my opinion. Um, Rob, I, I want to ask you guys, though, because there are some crazy, crazy spots in this. What do you guys think was your favorite spot, be it like a return or a maneuver or, you know, whatever? Jeff, go. Uh, dude, I got a props to Logan Paul. 100%. He got gang banged on the mat. <laughs> oh, uh, Rob, Rob said, I don't want to talk he, about this. Yeah. No, no. Uh, look, Logan Paul went in there. Don't you know? <laughs> Everyone jumped him. What? The, a gang of guys was beating him down. Like, come on! It was that was exactly what happened. They were banging him. Look, we, they were, we they had, were just sitting there banging him. Evan um, and David said that we had to talk about it on the podcast, and Robin was like, "Vote a veto, a veto that we're not talking about that on the podcast." <laughs> well, but no, I, the Logan, Logan Paul, Paul Logan Paul, and Ricochet going uh, rope to rope. Oh, doing man. like you know Vin Diesel catching uh, Michelle Rodriguez from Fast and uh, Furious, Fast and, the Furious and just colliding in the middle of the ring. That was, I mean, yeah, you know, moment of the night. It, it really, honestly, now that we're sitting here, I'm thinking about it. It's like that moment almost. It's making it hard for me to remember the other moments. And I know there are all kinds of moments through the Rumble yeah. where we're like, oh damn, but that moment was so over the top and something that you know I've never seen before. I don't know if it's ever happened before. Um, and that's pretty rare in wrestling nowadays where you get something where you haven't seen it before. Right. Am I, am I remembering this correctly that it was really cool to see Gunther stared down at Brock Lesnar? Yeah. yeah. He's taller than he's taller yeah, than Lesnar. That's yeah. a cool moment, man. Like it Brock is. Is a big guy. Yeah. And you don't look at it, but you know, Gunther's arms are bigger than Brock's Brock has just yeah, got, he's just barrel night. chested. Yeah, you're right. He's barrel chested. He's just, you know, he's he's a thicker, you know, endomorph. Um, and it's just different body types. But Gunther, Gunther really shined uh, last night, and yeah. I, I think mm-hmm. I think I'm a fan of his now. I was We're doing the whole thing night. too. He was 100 percent my MVP of the night. Uh, he ran the he ran he ran bell pretty much almost bell to bell. He was the last guy out. He was the first guy in. And you know, a little bit of shade from WWE because they said that he's now the longest. Um, the longest entrant in a rumble at over 74 minutes. But it's like, you know, Daniel Bryan was in there for 78 minutes a couple of years ago. And, you know, way to, way to, way to throw some shade at, well, at the boy, Brian. Isn't, isn't there someone still in the rumble from like years ago? Who yeah, never Curtis, got Axel. Eliminated? Curtis, Curtis Axel, Axel. Never got eliminated, but technically you know. he did the next year. Yeah. He, he got eliminated the next year, right. but you're right, you're right. Curtis Axel is still <laughs> In the 2016 Rumble, was it 2016? I think it was 2016. He's still in it technically. He didn't get, <laughs> and for that matter, Rey Mysterio is still in the 2023 Rumble. Yeah, yeah. you well, guys want to talk about Ray, that? They said that Ray got injured, and they're going to talk about that on uh, on SmackDown this week about how he got injured. And my guess is it's either Karrion Cross or it's Dominic. Most likely Karrion Cross. But moving on from the no, Rumble he did real quick. What, before you move on, he did. I, I saw the um, announcement. He did get hurt in the Karrion Cross um, match, um, bad enough to not be on there. Although I think the storyline is going to be he got jumped in the back, Most and likely. that's why uh, Dominic had his mask. Yeah. yeah. So Karrion Cross was out pretty quick, and I think that they will that he probably saw Ray on the way to the ring and just pow. But anyway, moving on. Congratulations to our man Cody Rhodes. We're so so proud uh, to see a Georgia boy representing us. Uh, and WWE is the number one contender to the Universal Championship. So All we Rick, got now is the Hawks, right? We just need the Hawks to win because yeah, we got we the, the Bulldogs won. Bulldogs, right? Braves, yeah. we need the Cody won. The Bra- Bra- yeah, I, I like we're not even trying to talk about the Falcons in this conversation. Well, you know, the Falcons don't count. Twenty-eight <laughs> fucking point lead. Falcons don't Twenty-eight count. point lead. 
Until we get a quarterback, we don't count. So, anyway, uh, moving on, we had three great matches in the middle uh, before the women's uh, rumble. We had the uh, the pitch black match with Bray Wyatt and L.A. Knight, which – Interesting match. The 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 look, the 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 black light on the ring with all the face paint that Bray had on. He brought out the mask after he pinned him. It was a really short match because I think that the men's rumble may have gone a little long. Um, but we're gonna just kind of briefly touch on this. We got an Uncle Howdy. Uh, Uncle Howdy jumps off and does the uh, the Randy Savage elbow into L.A. Knight through mm-hmm. the stage. That was fun. You had the he brushed his face. I mean, L.A. Knight could be dead. <laughs> Or he completely missed him. It looked like he completely completely missed 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 him. Or he killed him. It is either one or ten. Nothing in the middle. I mean, he does have that mask on his face. He can't see shit. Yeah, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a a cool match. It was an interesting match. Um, It just, the whole thing felt like an extended um, entrance for Naomi is what it felt like, honestly. Like, I... If I would have been there and I would have known that was going to happen, you, you would have take like some like an ecstasy pill or something and yeah. just like <laughs> if they had it wrong. Hands, but what really, hands, what really yeah. about that match was cool to me was that like you know you have all the ring gear of all these guys all highlighted. You know, like LA Knight had his trunks and his knee pads and his shorts and everything. But you know, in the world of like cartoons and animation, there is a style to where it's like if you did a yeah. silhouette of every cartoon character. They the the way they stand the pose is so unique that you should be able to look at a black silhouette of a character and know exactly who they are. And that's and how WWE really, wants to do wrestlers. And that'd be really cool if there was an like a, a rumble for, for thirty people and they were all like that, and you could be able to tell whose outfit is neon lights and know exactly who they are where, wherever they are. That sure, would you be keep cool. talking about the outfits, but you admitted last night that you couldn't stop staring at L.A. Knight's crotch. The only thing I could see. Let's just say that. It's the, he, was, he wasn't there, but his trunks were moving, and I'm like, right. dude, it's yeah. like yelling at my face. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So congratulations to Bray Wyatt and all six of his uh, Bray Wyatt characters inside of his brain. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing them flesh out more of this story with Bray. Um, but uh, a lot of fun in that match, and uh, thumbs up for Cosmic Bowling Bray Wyatt. Big, big fun. Yes, <laughs> yes. Big fun. Hey, real quick, did you guys, before we move on, did you guys check out the press conference or the media scrum or whatever they're, they're calling it now? I did afterwards. not see it. I did not well, see I stayed the press up, conference. I'm going to watch I that stayed up late night. last night, and I watched You guys need to watch it. They had Bray on there out of character, and they were talking to him about oh, The Undertaker. Sweet. They right. talked to him about, yeah, it, uh, it was it was a really, oh, really man. good um um, I mean, I, he was out of character, but I, it's it's still in canon, I guess. But yeah. um, hmm. the whole the whole thing they had Bray, they had Cody, they had Rhea, and they had Triple H yeah. on there. Um, it was, wasn't it was Cody fantastic. talking some AEW stuff. Yeah, it was a little well, bit cool. Yeah. yeah, I like the realism of the press conferences because it gives you it, it takes that fourth wall, it takes that curtain away, so you get to see these people outside of their characters, and it gives it a little bit more, you know big movie style you know it's mm-hmm. like you're watching a, it's like you're watching a goddamn marvel movie it makes it even better for me as a fan but um yeah bray Wyatt. it, it made love me love Rhea. it made me love like Rhea even more oh, you got we're, 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 we're all Rhea fans but she was like so sweet on that like and like you know her just smile and i was just i was like oh yeah. <laughs> more about more about Rhea shortly but we're gonna touch quickly on this women's match bianca belair and uh and alexa bliss for the, the raw Women's Championship, a clean victory for the uh, the NX the the EST of WWE. A, a quick quick match again. They're trying to keep the Rumbles uh, and and the in the main event right. So I think they could have they could have saved that for later. That that match I mean, they didn't need to happen. It another night, but you know, five minute, five six seven minute match. Uh, Rhea, uh, uh, Bianca wins cleanly with the KOD, and then we get a little more character development with Alexa Bliss at the end with the Uncle Howdy promo video, the Wyatt Six promo video. What's going to happen with Alexa Bliss? Yeah, I don't know. I, I was really hoping they were going to develop it a little bit more last night um, because I feel like something needs to happen for Mania. And, you know, we've only got a couple more months. And, I mean, it's a slow burn. I, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not a fan of the slow burn, but it's just it seems like they need to do something with it fairly soon because yeah. they've kind of just done the same thing. It's like, oh, he's standing there, and um, and they even brought on. Wait, I think Alexa Bliss was in the media scrum, I think, and they talked to her about that, and they asked about what was going to happen 
or no, they talked to somebody about it. I, they I, talked I can't to Bray remember. about it, and then, then, then maybe they, yes, that's what it was. They talked to I Bray read, about it. Yeah, I read some stuff on the internet this morning, but uh, I'm gonna watch the uh, when we get off today. I'm gonna watch the uh, press conference because I feel like that's important. Chef, what are your thoughts about what's going on with Alexa Bliss and this long term storytelling? How they are hearkening back to uh, WrestleMania two years ago with Bray and how they're bringing back uh, the dark witchy Alexa. I think they need to double down or triple down and make Alexa start attacking Bray. Like, you know, his creation, she's, she's the Frankenstein monster of him and he need and she needs to basically start ruining his life. That would be cool. Mm. She's become too big for him. And, uh, yeah, I think that'd be awesome for her. Interesting. Interesting take. Well, for me, this may have been the uh, the second match of the night. Uh, I feel like this one had a little more drama than the men's Royal Rumble. We're talking about the women's Royal Rumble. Number one entrant, Rhea Ripley, who is... Coast to coast. Coast to Boss coast. Boss-ass bitch. Boss-ass bitch. 70 minutes in the match, wins the match. And it was interesting because not only did she come out number one, but Liv Morgan came out number two. And who were the last two in the match? Liv Morgan and yeah. Rhea Ripley. Also, we had a returning Asuka in her evil Kana with the love with it. The, with the, oh you my pop God, for the clown, that. Matt. Yeah, I Rob Rob about clown. had an orgasm on like oh. I've been watching. I've been watching Japanese wrestling for well over a decade and a half, and to have her come out in her old clown gimmick where she was evil, was the best. I don't know where they're going with that, but God damn it, I hope they do something huge with this because after Minoru Suzuki beat her ass, she became this dark, evil character. And and if, if they do half what they did in Japan with her in WWE, it's going to be right. But Rhea Ripley wins a freaking phenomenal match, goes coast to coast, first woman to start at one and, and, and win the match, a la Shawn Michaels. And, I mean, if, if, if that did not solidify her as the biggest women's star in the business, I don't know what's going to. I will say this, though. Uh, kind of a waste of Beth Phoenix. Because Beth Phoenix got all done up, and she appeared during the men's, uh, men's match. Yeah. And assaulted Ripley, and then she didn't come back out. I think, I think a lot the of reason hairspray. why they did that. They ran think, out of hairspray. I think the reason why they did that is because, and I thought about this afterwards because I was upset, too. But I feel like the reason why they did that is because if they didn't do it, or, or if Beth did get into the um, the the Women's Royal Rumble, she almost has to win, right? She needs redemption for the horrible things that happened to her. So she got her payback and set up the WrestleMania match between her and Ripley with um, you know with, with Edge and Dom. Um, I think you know that still did it, and then it gave Rhea her time to shine because she needed it, she deserves it, and it was perfect. And if I think if Beth Phoenix was in there, it would almost sullied it because, you know, she's yeah. Beth deserves her comeback. Um, and that just wasn't the time for her to have her comeback. So then she shouldn't have even appeared. No. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's I, I could see where you could say that they definitely could have pushed that to like elimination chamber, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I think with Edge coming back, um, maybe that that's why. Right. They wanted them both here at the same time so they could all have that interaction together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's where you're going to get your mixed tag match with edge and Beth versus fill in the blank. Probably, probably Dom and Rhea is at elimination chamber because Rhea has the opportunity to face any women's champion that she chooses at WrestleMania. So that's true. Unless, yeah. Unless yeah. You're her, right. Unless they have her pull a double duty and she wrestles night one and night two, which honest to God, I'm here for it because again, they she's, could, she's one of the yeah. biggest stars in the company right now. I mean, God damn it. She's just, she's just. She's a star. Like Rhea Ripley is a freaking star. And it's 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 becoming more evident. She's become the Bianca Belair of this year. And yeah. I read something the other day that said they were not planning on having Bianca win uh at uh the Royal Rumble two years ago when she faced <laughs> Sasha in the main event. They were gonna have Charlotte win that match. But at the last minute, somebody got in Vince's ear. Uh, maybe it's Bruce Pritchard or somebody thinking like, hey, remember, we're trying to make new stars here. And it's a good thing they did because Bianca Belair uh, has become one of the, uh, one of the biggest stars. Has been, she, she has been For shot sure. to the moon. 
And, Triple H uh, brought it up about her um, in the press conference, too, just talking about how he remembers how emotional she was the first night she did the live, her first live appearance, like back sure. in NXT, and to see her there, like crying on the floor in the back to where she's at now, and just how, like, you know, this was emotional for him. And, and you know, because that's, she's very much so a Triple H girl. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's beautiful. I think it's awesome. And I, I agree, Rhea Ripley is is the best thing that that women's wrestling has to offer at this current moment um and i'm not just saying that because you know because i because we got a thing for her um i think she's we talked about this last night i think she's a china of this generation um and sh i think she has more talent than china did yeah, okay. you know if we're being honest you know she has a lot more upside in my opinion but i mean i digress <laughs> but yeah the, the the this was for me my favorite Undoubtedly, my favorite women's rumble match out of the we've had we've had five or is it six now? How many have we had? This is my favorite. Um, I don't know if it's the best one, but it's the one that drew me the most for sure. Yeah. And the finish was just, I mean, can we can we talk about for a second about like the amount the 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 dynamic and the detail and the booking for this and for for all of these things recently? Yeah. And I know we're gonna get to the main event here soon, but I mean, you know, somebody I posted a meme about like. You know, they had some of those segments from tonight, and then it had like a picture of Scorsese. It's like, now that's what I call cinema. <laughs> like, this that's is right. like, this is like movie level, you know, yeah. drama. Whoever, whoever's producing women's wrestling in WWE right now needs 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 a fucking pay raise because it's it is it is this is this is some of the best work I've seen in in in, in years. So whoever's whoever's doing this, man, like you know, kudos. Uh, whoever Keep triple H picture that. Hopefully, it's like you know Hurricane Helms and Road Dog or somebody like that. But they're they're crushing it. They're they are knocking it out of the park. The women look strong. Their matches are interesting and compelling. You know, it's it's not brawn panties matches anymore. It's not you know pillow. No, it's matches. actual wrestling. It's actual. Like, who would have thought? And they look great and they're killing it, man. It's just it's like. God, who would have thought a couple years ago? Twenty twenty three. That that just a couple years ago, it, like who would have thought that we were just sitting here like talking about how good the programming and booking is for WWE. <laughs> like, hey, it's funny well, because, like, for years now, we've been in, you know, the group. It's, it's since, what, 2014 we started that group? And yeah. just for years, we were just like, God, this is horrible. We're still going to watch it. But it's just, you know, and a lot of us stopped watching for a long time. And, it like, and, and here we are. Like, yeah, it really was. And then AEW came around. And, like, you know, I know we, some of the guys make fun of us, um, specifically, you know, you and – me Ryan um for you know being AW a AEW fanboys and hey we do love it and I do still watch it but um I'm not just a fanboy I'm a fanboy of wrestling and like I, WWE has really they've, they've really done amazing yeah my only concern sure. is with Vince coming back you know is that gonna throw people keep saying back? that but he is back he's back in Titan Tower um right. you know he back said multiple times Triple H has had several meetings that saying like creative's not going anywhere. It's staying the way it is. So, I mean, look, you know, I, we'll be able to tell if it happens. And as of right now, things seem to be getting better, not yeah. worse. Okay. And if, we need, so. and if we need any indication on how great booking and creative is going, we only need to look at last night's main event. Oh, yeah. For the WWE Universal Championship. We had. Wait, are we, are we missing? Are uh, we missing a match? No. No. There's only five matches. Do we we do the the rumble, the women's rumble with Alexa Bliss, LA Knight, yeah, and then the main event. Oh, we did do the pitch. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Jeez, so, yeah. that, that's great, wasn't it? That I mean, there's five back. matches. Yeah. Like it was. I mean, it was, it, I think it was pretty good. Yeah. So circling back, we did have the uh, the main event last night. That was your WWE Universal Championship between Kevin Owens, the challenger, and Roman Reigns, our perennial 800 plus day champion the tribal chief, the head of the table. And this is the most compelling story in wrestling. This is this is more than MJF. This is more than CM Punk, more than the Bucks, more than, you know, anybody else in wrestling. This is the story because of the bloodline, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and uh, Paul Heyman. And I'd like to think that they produced their own match, the ending, everything, because just A, how smoothly it went, B, how compelling it is. I mean, you, you, you're you on the edge of your seat. You want to know what's going to happen next. You want Sammy to grow a pair of balls and do what he needs to do, and he did. So at the after the match, do we really need to talk about the match, or is it the aftermatch is really what's more important? 
My question I mean, the match is, was, who is bringing handcuffs into the down to the ring? Oh, like, why are they just randomly not, hanging around? And not just handcuffs, but like the long, the long handcuffs. ones. Yeah, the S and M handcuffs. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you said that, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, for a good time, call Paul Heyman. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> he looks like that. He's that kind of guy. He's that kind of guy. He's got one in his basement for sure. I mean, um, for me, this guy's talking about gangbangs over here. Come on, man. We, we a gang there. of guys was banging up somebody, we somebody else. There. Like that's how it goes. You know, listen. <laughs> So, in a, a oh, well, we didn't even talk about the gangbang on Nia Jax. Oh God, no! I just been moving them. We're going back. To this. We're going back. <laughs> no one cares about Nia Jax. The- you were, you guys were so pissed off at me because I called it, and they're like, I "You jinxed you. it. She's here." But I feel like they did good. You they, put they that threw evil the fuck into out. the world, sir, and I will never <laughs> forgive you. Period. We could have yeah, had the- Stratus at number thirty, but no, we got Nia Jax moving back into this championship match. Great it was match. A good match. And- Great match from head to toe. Great storytelling. Uh, Roman wins the match uh, after spearing and uh, the 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 uh, suplexes into the uh, steel steps when Kevin Owens. Oh, hit his head. oh my oh. God! Yeah, twice, Disgusting. twice. I mean, he I mean, it looked like like you're supposed to, but God, no, damn, but still yeah. on that first. I don't give a shit what you do with your chin oh, when you get hit over. with an edge of a metal piece on the back of your head. I don't give a shit oh, what man. you do with your chin. That's a concussion, man. Like yeah. that looked like a botch, and then he went back and did it again. Like yeah. Jesus. And Lord. then after all of that, he's still defiant and punching and slapping and trying to get his to shine, and, he, and obviously he couldn't get his shine because Roman speared his speared him out of his boots for the one, two, three. But after the match, after the match. Roman said that Sammy was going to have his final test. The bloodline come out. They're beating the shit out of Kevin Owens. They've, they've got him handcuffed. And Roman's about to hit him with the chair, and Sammy stops him. And he gives Roman gives Sammy the chair and says, you're going to hit him. You're going to take him out. And then out of nowhere, you're just like, Sammy, just like, like, like be a man. Just like, take Roman's ass out. Be a man. Sammy crushes Roman <laughs> across the back with that chair, going back to the breakup of the Shield in 2016 when Seth Rollins hits uh, hits Roman and Dean Ambrose with the chair. That's a and good shot. It was, it was a great, great callback to uh, to, to that, which I lo- always love. Good long story time, long term story telling callbacks. That was a lot. So they start beating Sammy's ass. They lay him out, and then Jay Uso just. Gets out of the ring and leaves, crying and confused and upset. So we've got a big puppy. The, we got a big rift in the bloodline here, Justin. I know you got to go soon, so please give us your thoughts on this match, and then you know we'll catch you next time, Chef. Uh, and I'll my out. favorite part about this match, and the match was great, but I mean, you know, we're, we're really talking about storytelling now, right? And like this yeah. is really top level storytelling. This is some of the best storytelling that I've ever seen um, in wrestling. And I think what's great about this match is that it gave us just like a lot of like our favorite shows that like leave us in suspense. Um, it gave us some of the things that we've been wanting. Like it, get, we've been wanting that Sammy turn. He's just yeah. being beat down by, you know, verbally and mentally, not physically, you know, by the bloodline for just months now. And, and we just, you want him to just stand up for him. Fuck him. You know, like, you know, like so many of us, you know, feel, day in and day out by our bosses or whatever it may be, a sibling. Mm-hmm. And like, you just want him to stand up for himself and he just doesn't do it. And, you know, cause he's loyal, but you know, at some point it, there's a difference between loyalty and, and being subjected to abuse. And, you know, that's, that's really was, he was more of a slave than an honorary member of the group and a loyal slave. And so him finally turning and finally growing a set of balls and standing up to his boss, um, that was beautiful, and that was a big payoff for us. But the way that they did it, it still left us with more questions than we got answers. 100%. Because now we don't know what's going to happen with Sammy. Is he going to be a part of it? it? What's going on with Jay? Is Are they going to become mm-hmm. attacked? Like, we still don't know. It's like, you know, there was a show called Lost way back in the way. It's like they would give you one answer, but then they would they give would ten more questions. pose to 10 more questions. So it's just it brought out, and that's exactly what happened last night. And and I want to point out that there was no blood in this post match scene. It's probably the most brutal segment that I've ever seen that didn't involve blood. They between the head thing and then the handcuffs and him fighting, it was almost I dare to say like a little difficult to watch. Like yeah. they did such a good job of just 
giving these people, you know, there's so much sympathy on both of these. And then that scene at the end with the flowers strewed across the, 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 oh, yeah. the canvas Cinematic, and Talk what about Scorsese. Out, like, like, that's, like that's, I mean, like blood that, everywhere. It looked like blood with well, just, just the, the, the metaphor, the flowers, yeah. you know, thrown over the dead. And then like, you know, just, you know, Kevin Owens being, I mean, that's, that's a picture like to me, like that's fucking Austin bleeding in, in, in the, um, in the sharpshooter, you know what I mean? Right. Like that's, that's that iconic at this point now, like that needs to be put in black and white and, um, and maybe yeah. the, the, the flowers are red, but yeah, it was, it was, I, very it. Much, I, I support it was that. Very it's a poster. A callback. It was very much a callback to the Godfather. Wonderful. Yeah. Take you, the cannoli. You broke my go. heart. You broke, you my, broke heart, my heart, Sammy. Oh. No, it was you. Sammy. So now I must break your face. Hey, Justin, if you need to roll, man, uh, Chef and I can finish this out, bro. It's up to you. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Um, we yep. will see you guys soon. Um, we're going to do something. We're going to do more of this. Man. I, I, it was so much fun last night, and we talked about it so much, and I'm so glad that we made it happen. It needs to happen more. I love you guys. Oh, yeah. And like Rob, you said, we need to set something up that's that yes. not just watching wrestling. We but will. um, you guys take care. I love y'all. See you see on the next one. Love you, love you, brother. Love you, brother. Chef, you stay with me. Let's finish this. All right. So thank you again for our, our co-host, Justin. Uh, he has a, he has a, a commitment that he needs to, uh, to get to, but uh, man, chef, please. I want to hear more about your thoughts on this match, the Royal rumble as a whole. I mean, my God, can, can we, can we just continue to talk about how phenomenal from head to toe this card was? I mean, production, perfect booking, perfect Everybody looks strong. I mean, the right people look strong. I mean, my God, what do what do we what do we want to want to do? What do we want to do? Let's let's. let's, let's I, I think you you gotta you gotta keep going. Um, yeah. Keep doubling down harder. You know, I, I think the Alexa Bliss has a lot of avenues to go. I think Bianca Belair um, needs to drop the title soon because she's kind of cleaned out the division and it really is we're time. doing rematches. Yeah, and it really yeah, is let, let's see, let's see Alexa Bliss um, go full on full on evil. Yeah, it really is time. No. And you know the, the the fleshing out of this story with uh, with Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt Six, Uncle Howdy, the Firefly Funhouse. Mm -hmm. None of us really know where this is going. Obviously, um, I'd love to see a reveal of Uncle Howdy. I'd like to know who that is. Um, obviously, you know, a man wrestling in a mask is going to be hard because you know we've all seen people like Rey Mysterio, people like Psychosis, uh, La Parka, uh, Blue Demon. Uh, Santo uh, from the. Man, I just think it's, it's difficult. Wrestling. Like you're restricting your airflow, you're hard sweating. To it's, it's gross. It's hard to wrestle in a mask. But you know, no. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But I, I, I love the direction that WWE is going in right now. I really hope that we keep this thing going. Um, but looking ahead, we are on the road to WrestleMania. Uh, WrestleMania April first and second in uh, okay. California at a, at a SoFi Stadium, the brand new SoFi Stadium in Eaglewood, California. That's going to be a big old, big old bundle of joy. What do we? What? How do we feel about? How do we feel about these storylines moving forward? We've got some great stuff because you know Edge is back, Beth Phoenix is back, the the Judgment Day they're they're crushing it. Rhea is the number one contender to the any women's title. So you've got a lot of great stories coming out of Raw. You've got a lot of great stories coming out of SmackDown with Bray and the Bloodline, and you know these are these are the most compelling stories leading into WrestleMania. It's 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 my hope that we're going to get a big payoff with Sammy and with Jay. Oh yeah, of course. I I really I really would like to see because remember this whole thing started with Jay and Roman back at Hell in a Cell uh, 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 about a, about two years two and a half years ago. Where do we go? Do we want to see Sammy contend for the title, or do we want to see Jay contend for the title? I want to see this, and this just popped in my head. I want to see a triple threat match where it's the first person to two pins, and the first pin gets the Universal title. The second pin gets the uh, SmackDown title. I like that. And then if like Roman that. wins both, he keeps them. Yeah, I like that. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. I feel like, I feel like two... You're, you're probably going to have to have a night one and a night two match with Roman just because he is the biggest draw right now. Right. Um, I, I mean, obviously, Cody has to have a match. 
Sammy or Jay or whoever it's going to be has to have a match. But I do like the idea of a two out of three falls match. First fall for one championship, second fall for fun. the other. That, that makes good sense, and that would be a lot of fun. Um, man, what a what a Royal Rumble, man! For it was fun. It was fun. It was it was an awesome yeah. gathering and good people and good commentary, and it was yeah. had some fun spots, and I, I had a great time. Yeah, and uh, big shout out to uh, to Logan Paul. Um, I know I know we uh, we give Logan Paul shit, but the dude's dude's a he spot brought champ. Dude, I can good. bring it. Dude can go, and in that spot with him and Ricochet in the middle of the damn match, where they just they just collided in the middle of the ring. I mean, that was it just that's you know, cool. You love to see stuff like that, man. You really do. I mean, it, 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 it's it it's some, again, flavor, it was you know, it was flavor. something kind of like the Fast and the Furious, yeah, which is ridiculous as it is. So good. Kudos to them for making that stuff happen, making good. that stuff real. Well, uh, once again, we'd like to uh, thank our host, uh, Mr. David Lewis, for having us at his home last night for the Royal Rumble. We love getting together with you, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Uh, to our buddy Ron, listening to us. To our, uh, to our friends up in Canada, listening to us. The Moth family, as we like to call them. Um, great, great Royal Rumble. We are on the road to WrestleMania. Tune in next week to see what else we've got for you guys. I cool. am Coach. This is The Chef. For Justin, happy wrestling, everybody. Jay Briscoe. Happy wrestling. Jay Briscoe, rest in peace. Reach for the sky, boy. We love you.